Get ready to ignite your real estate business with the Launch Your Farm podcast. Our episodes are packed with inspiration, success stories, and expert strategies that will help you dominate your geographic farm. So tune in and enjoy. You know, I firmly believe that, you know, where you are today and where you can be in five years from now, like, will blow your mind. Welcome back to another episode of the Launcher Farm Show. I'm your host, Ryan Smith. And today we've got a great guest. It's Lorraine Jordan. She's with Keller Williams in Simcoe County. So Lorraine, take a second. Tell us a bit about yourself and why you're here. Hey, I'm here because you invited me. So thank you for that. Um, yeah, I'm just here to share. I love real estate. I've been in it since I was 18 up in Midland Penetang on beautiful Georgian Bay. And I, I don't know, I've sold a lot of homes over the years. I've made a lot of mistakes and learned a lot of lessons. So I always say you either learn or you earn. So happy to share and just be an open book and see if we can't impact some other agents out there that are, you know, looking for some new ideas. Awesome. And hopefully today we learn and earn from you because I know you've got some amazing experience and some amazing insights and I really want to dive into that. So let's take us back to, you mentioned you were 18 when you got started. So tell us a bit about that kind of beginning time frame and, and what even drew you to this industry as a whole. Oh, it goes way back. So it's kind of a crazy story. I mean, I got my first job when I was like 13, um, worked in a little mom and pop grocery store and just kind of grew from there with um, customer service and solving problems. Um, you know, they used to tease me all the time and say, oh, you should be selling like used cars or something. <laughs> you know, I was just a kid in high school trying to figure life out. And I don't know, somebody came in and said, man, you should sell like real estate. And I went, oh, real estate signs kind of glamorous. So yeah, at 18 years old, I got into real estate, um, sold my first property within a couple of weeks, bought a flip property within a couple months and kind of never looked back. That's awesome. And I think I really want to dive into some of the, I'd say myth busting, because I think there's a lot of things that you've done in your career that have gone against the norm of what a lot of agents have pushed and what about a lot of agents believe or a lot of, a lot of agents have been told. So I want to kind of dispel some of those myths. And the first one right away is, is being 18, because I find that is something that a lot of agents are told, like, oh, you're too young, or they feel, oh, I'm too young, I can't get into this business. So talk to me a bit about that, because I think for if you're watching this, maybe you are young, maybe you haven't gotten the business. What was that for you like for you? Because obviously you jumped in at a at like probably the legal age you could jump in and get started. So how did that look like for you? And, and what did that look like at the beginning? You know, it's funny because I've I've had um, I've worked with agents. I've had agents come into the business at eighteen. Um, I've really spent a lot of time trying to understand what makes or breaks a great agent. Like, what's it take to succeed? Um, it's not age. It's not experience. It's not knowledge. It's um, discipline helps, but it, it's it's having a must, right? So there's two reasons why you don't achieve a goal. One is you don't know what the goal is. So it's knowing what it is that you want. And then two, I always thought would be taking action, but it's making it a must. Like, why is it a must in your life? And for me, it was never, I don't know. I, I was wired. I am wired that I want to deliver and be the best that I can be. Like when it comes to, when I was 18, I wasn't thinking, you know, oh, I can't wait to sell my first house. It was like, I can't wait to sell all the houses, <laughs> <laughs> right? So I think that there's a, there's a mindset, there's, um, there's a drive, there's a determination. Uh, definitely real estate takes tenacity. You know, you're going to get punched in the face. There's days, I, I can't even count on both hands how many times I've wanted to just quit and say, oh my God, this is brutal. I can't do this anymore. Mm. Um, but it's having that ability to go, okay, that's, you know, these people are yelling and they're frustrated and they're angry at me for no reason. Like it's not personal. There's something going on in their world, right? Mm -hmm. What's happening to them for them to be reacting like that? And how can I, you know, um, work with them to help them, you know, solve their problem? Because I always say, you know, real estate um, or sales in general isn't telling, it's solving. Like yeah. what is the problem? What do they need? How can I make things better, easier, faster, you know, how can I get them more? It's just, how do I make that happen? Yeah. So, yeah, I don't care how old you are. Um, I'll get people that go, oh, well, you know, I, I don't know anybody in the area. Okay, then go meet people. It's not hard to meet people, <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, a, an excuse is just that. It's an excuse. Yep. And for the viewers, if they don't know your story, can you kind of share the scope of the amount of volume you're doing and, and the, the size of the area? Because I think that's a big part of... of yeah, our entire area. 
yeah, as a population of 20,000 people, I mean, back in, you know, when I first started, there were probably somewhere around 12,000 people. Um, it's, it, we get more people seasonally because there is a cottage, um, con, you know, cottage area concept. So some people in the summertime, we could reach a population of 80, 90,000 wow. um, in that area. But, you know, I was selling, I don't know, I, I personally sold 100 properties a year for as long, as far back as I can remember. Before I even started a team, I was doing 100 transactions on my own. And then as we add more things, social media, the website, all that kind of stuff, you know, I've added more and more support. But as a team, we've averaged 400 transactions um, a year uh, in that small area. But I think that some of it for me, if I feel that there's a limitation, I go and debunk that limiting belief. Right. I remember I met somebody that was doing 400 transactions in an area of um, 25,000. So I'm thinking, well, if she can do it. I can do it. Right. I, I think it's it's finding the solution because, I mean, you've got to believe it. You know, if you feel that there's a limitation or you believe that like the industry average is to sell four homes a year. Well, I don't know. I've never felt average and I knew I could do more than that. So I just did. I helped, you know, over 100 families instead. Like we've helped over 10,000 families in my career. Wow, that's crazy. You know, it, it's, it's about solving their problems and helping people and caring about others. And I care just as much about, you know, my clients as I do my teammates, as I do my community, you know, it's, it's just who I am. And I, I think it's important too. you mentioned the, the debunking the myths, because I think that is what holds back many, many agents. And I, I actually teach a one hour session just on myths about farming. And I find that a lot of agents never take off or never go in the right direction because they're held back by a lot of those myths. They feel like, well, if so-and-so is doing this, or I was told I can only do that. You have to, I think at all times, be looking at those myths and, and or be looking at what you think are truths and say, is this true? And can I, can I break that truth? And can I work around that? And it sounds like for you, you, you look at the opportunity and say, okay, this is what's in front of me. How do I reframe this? How do I change that? Would you say that's, you mentioned being hardwired. Is that something that is in your, is your, in your nature or is that something you've had to learn? Was that something you were taught? Because I find a lot of agents struggle with that and re reframing how they see things. I think there's a couple things to what she said. So I feel that um, my wiring goes to what's the worst case scenario. Mm. Right. What, what's the worst case scenario that's going to happen? You know, 2020, March 2020. Holy cow. Right. What's the worst case scenario that's going to happen? Um, you know, none of my deals are going to close the whole team. And we're all going to end up living in one house. <laughs> you know what? And I, I go down to this like horrible worst case scenario. And then I go, OK, I can live with that. Like I found footing. Mm. Right? Like there's a solid ground to build from now it's like okay well I don't want that to happen I want this to happen so then I'm able to move away from that and go make what I want happen um that's that's how I would say that I'm I'm wired I mean I'm always looking I come from curiosity I want to understand stuff um I want to understand people I, I I'm always curious as to what's happening so that I can come up with a, a solution um and I mean, I, I've heard so many things. I'm too young. I'm too old. I'm, um, you know, oh, you live in a small town. It's it's easier in a small town than it is in the city. It's like, I don't agree with that. You have way more people. Um, and I'll tell people, yeah, go go find a community. Go find a neighborhood, a, a farm area uh, with 20,000 people in it then and, and dominate it. You want to compare apples to apples. I mean, the houses are a heck of a lot closer together. I mean, my 20,000, I could have houses that are a mile apart. Like go door knock that. <laughs> yeah. um, also, I would never tell anybody to do anything I wouldn't do. You know, like I, I laugh um, probably about seven or eight years ago, uh, I had some new agents started and, you know, I was telling them to go door knocking and they're like looking at me like I'm crazy. And I'm like, I'll come out with you. And I get started getting in my own head, like, holy cow, I haven't done this in a long time. And I'm kind of the brand, right? So I'm like, what are people going to say? And I started having the stories. And I walked up to the first door and while I'm walking up the driveway, I knock on the door and I know I'm saying, don't be home, don't be home, don't be home, <laughs> yeah. flyer to drop, right? And um, the door, as I started to put the flyer in the door open and I know I went, darn, right? <laughs> like yeah. You weren't supposed to be home. And so the guy goes, hey, and I go, hey, I'm Lorraine Jordan from Team Jordan Real Estate. I'm just out and about. And he goes, wait a minute, aren't you like the Lorraine Jordan? And I remember thinking, really? <laughs> My first door? And that's what I'm going to get. And he goes, you must be 
desperate if you're out here doing this. And without missing a beat, and I don't even know, I guess it's just listening and, you know, podcasts and books and everything out of my mouth goes, I'm not desperate, but my clients are. My buyers really want to buy in this area and I'm willing to do whatever it takes to find them a great home. You know, who do you know that's thinking of selling or are you? And we had a great conversation and then we went on and did the whole street. And the next day I got a phone call from this guy's neighbor who wasn't home because he told them that like, it's serious. They have a good buyer. Even Lorraine Jordan herself was out doing it. I listed the house, the buyer bought it. Like I've never been out door knocking without getting an appointment ever. That's awesome. So I want to dive into some strategies and techniques and things you do as well, because I think that's important in my experience is having the right approaches and the right strategy. So when you were getting started, what were you doing to get generate those business? You mentioned you were doing about 100 deals a year. What were you doing to keep the pipeline filled? So when I first got started, I mean, I was I was door knocking. I've always gone door knocking. Um, networking is big for me. So I, so the other thing I'll hear is, you know, oh, you don't understand. I have small children at home and I laugh and I go, I'm a single mom of four, like kind of like bring it (laughs) with your excuses. I, I I don't want to hear them. Right. Oh, the market Uh, work harder. Right. So back then um, I, I would door knock and I was just out and about in the community and meeting people, networking um, and, and just, just listening. Like, you know, one of the, one of my kind of tricks of the trade that I do that I think is funny is, you know, if, if I have an appointment that changed or something and I don't have enough time to go back to the office and, or actually dig into some real work, um, I'll just pop into like a Home Depot or something and I'll walk up and down the aisles till I see somebody in an aisle and then I'll start picking up tiles and matching stuff and then I'll get closer to them and I'll be like, <laughs> what do you like better? And I said, I'm trying to put it with this. And then you get in this conversation and build some rapport with them. And they'll go, oh, it's so crazy, right? Every time, like, I don't know what it is. I always like make my house nicer before I get ready to sell it. And then they go, yeah, isn't that crazy? And then we start <laughs> talking and then I list houses from it. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah. So it's just, I think one of the, the things that I would say is like, I'm just always on. You know, I I had a new agent that joined my team once and and she hated real estate. I said, what do you mean you hate real estate? And she said, well, like everywhere I go, people want to talk about real estate. How's the market? I go to house parties and they want me to evaluate their home all the time. And I'm looking at her thinking like, are you crazy? Like, this is the best part. You know, if I was selling, I don't know, um, some weird gadget i'd have to explain what it is all the time yeah. whereas now all i have to do is show up and people start asking me um I, I just see that as an opportunity and that's that's the key too is is looking for those opportunities and being open to them and you have to be on to see them i'm just listening to a book they're talking about the raz the particular activating system about and when you are thinking about those things those opportunities will show up they will be in in your way but you have to be open to them and it sounds like for you you've made a very conscious effort to be open to them and not only be open to them, but to orchestrate them. And I think that's where a lot of agents are missing the opportunity to grow their business by orchestrating them. And it's they're they're waiting for it to just fall in their lap and those can happen. I call that the golden nugget business, but it's like, if you don't orchestrate those opportunities, you're leaving a lot of money on the table. So going above and beyond door knocking, what kind of things are you doing now with the team to ensure that you are getting that steady flow of leads and making sure that you guys do have continual growth? A lot of that is still still um, in play. I mean, I have a couple agents that they're the same thing. One of them is funny. He he doesn't do a, spe- a specific farm area, um, but he he believes what I taught him, right? So I'm like, every time I go out, I get an appointment. So I taught that to one agent. He shared it with the other one. The other one's out doing it. And I said to him, I said, okay, do you pick a specific area? And he's like, no. I said, tell everybody what you do. And he goes, I just get a feeling and I pull over and I hmm. door knock and I get an appointment. And I said, no research, no. And he goes, no. And I started laughing. I go, like, I love it. That's that always on, right? It's like, hey, you know, I'll drive around. I'll call into the office and I'll go uh, 4261 Main Street. And they're like, okay. And they know what to do because it means I drove by and the grass is long. Something's happening. And, you know, I'll make a compassion call, right? With compassion calls, I love that we called them that in 2020 because we should be doing them all the time, yeah. right? We're a real estate agent. We should be helping people at their homes. It's like, hey, I noticed you haven't cut the grass there. I don't know if you're using the house or not, but, you know, basically, I just want to know if you need any help with anything. No, I don't want to sell. Okay, um, I, then I can I just have your permission to stop 
and go on the property and close your screen door because it's just like mm. banging in the wind. And, you know, I'm just looking at it because I drive by there, you know, seven, eight times a day. I'm pretty busy up here. Um, and I just, you know, would love to do that for you. And, and they're always like, all the guard comes down. I'm not a jerk. I'm not trying to do anything, con them, whatever. I'm coming from compassion. I actually care. So it's like, I'm adding value. Yeah, that's huge. That, and that, yeah. that's, you mentioned at the beginning too, is the problem solving. And I, I'm a firm believer that value is in problem solving. And the more problems you can solve for people, the more value you add and the more value you add, the more likely you're going to, someone's going to want to work with you or refer you. And if you are sitting there coming from just the, Hey, work with me and not solving problems, then you are going to look just like every other agent. You are going to be the agent who only does 40 deals a year because you're just looking for the transaction and not the problem. Or worse yet, like I get really ticked off when people go, oh my God, I can't believe these people listed with somebody else. And I'm like, what do you mean? And they're like, well, I know them. <laughs> well, who are you to feel so entitled that every single person you know or related to or whatever should deal with you? Like, you know, when I got into real estate, you know, it, it was kind of, you know, people might know one or two agents. Now they all know a dozen of them. Yeah. How do you pick? And you talk about referrals or earning. Um, I'm always like financing is a big thing. Like financing will make or break your deals. If you don't have a great mortgage broker, a lender that you're working with, like you're leaving half, like you're, you're missing out big time. Yep. Um, so I remember this one lady came in recently and I sold her house like 15, 20 years ago. And she came in and she, we sat down and whatever. And she started telling me that her brother is now in real estate. And I thought, oh, here it goes. You're thinking about selling. We've had a great relationship and you're going to tell me that your brother's going to list your house and you just wanted to be, you know, let me down. Like, let's still be friends. Right? Yeah. Good conversation. I'm getting dumped. Right. And she said, um, so I just want to let you know that my brother's in real estate and I had a chat with him and I explained to him that we're going to be selling our house and we're going to be using you because if it wasn't for you, who would buy that house? So we wouldn't have a house to sell today mm -hmm. if it wasn't for you. And we owe our loyalty to you because nobody wanted to talk to us about financing. We were a little bit short on the down payment. You taught us cash back. You know, we were self-employed and like our bank of 20 years didn't even want to talk to us. And you got us the mortgage. So, mm -hmm. right. And I go, holy cow, like her brother's in real estate, people. Yeah. Like that's what happens when you go above and beyond and yep. you earn that client's business and then you stay in touch with them. And then you have the right to earn referrals and repeat business from them because exactly. you delivered, you're doing more. Same as when people say, Oh, how's the market? Or, Oh, how are you? You know, it's so easy to say, Oh, I'm busy. Well, I've said that before. And that was a real slap in the face. Cause then I get people that didn't want to bother me because I'm busy and, yep. you know, it was a Sunday. We didn't want to bother you on the weekend. So, you know, we went to an open house and we bought the house from so, <laughs> so right? And you're like, ah, okay. <laughs> I worked yeah. so hard to generate business and there it is sitting right there. Um, so when people say, oh, how is your week? Like, how's real estate? You know, it's so different. And I, I'll go, oh my gosh, it's, it's so fascinating what people are going through. And I'll share a story like, oh, we had this couple and, you know, um, they were really struggling to buy their first home and they were getting kicked out of house, out in apartments. And, you know, we managed to show them how they could still buy in this market. And, you know, I had another lady that she was moving into a nursing home and, you know, the daughter's dealing with all this clutter and we went in there and helped them clean it out. And, you know, and then I had someone else that was like ready to go power a sale. Like crazy enough, we had one week to sell their house or else they were going to lose it. Yeah. And it was such a shame. And we, you know, like I've been through this before. I've been around for a long time. I've seen these markets and we were able to help them and prevent that from happening. So when you do that, I just connected three different stories that I know are really popular and what's happening out there. Yeah. And, you know, they're thinking, and I've just told them how I can solve their problems or their friends problems, or, you know, I've given them a, a story to share. So when somebody says, you know, oh, yeah, we're having some problems, you know, why so-and-so lost their job or the interest rates are doing this. And they're like, you know, you should call Lorraine Jordan. I heard a story. And they yeah. There, yeah. Right. The gossip. Exactly. The gossip. <laughs> and it's it comes back to as well as that it's not just real estate related. And I find a lot of agents are linear in their thinking on, OK, if I'm going to solve problems, it's got to be real estate specific to that transaction. And it's in my experience, it's not. It should be if you can help solve life problems for them, I mean, you're obviously not going to be their, their counselor and therapist at, at all times, but you when you, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> let's get let's face real. It, yeah, we are. Yeah. <laughs> but if you're helping them with life, 
and you're solving those problems, people, like you said, will know to come to you when they have a problem rather than feel like, hey, I'm going to be, she's going to be turned off. She doesn't want to talk to me because she's too busy. When you say, hey, I'm open to helping you with, with whatever, come to me with your problems. That's when you open the door and the floodgates will open to people going, hey, I, I've got this pride. I, I know you're probably busy, but can you help me? Or you you orchestrate them, like you said, you, you look for those opportunities to help them. And that's what creates that goodwill. Oh, I had a, I had a message recently and it's like, I don't know if this is real estate advice or parenting advice, but <laughs> you were the person I thought of. And I'm like, okay. I said, I know I'm an expert in real estate parenting and eh, <laughs> I do my best and my kids are wonderful, but um, there's a lot of mistakes there too. Um, and she was, yeah, she was struggling because she had two, her two kids at home and they're paying rent, but what they're paying is not covering the bills. And she goes like, I'm dating. I'm hardly ever home now. And I'm like, boys, you need to separate like the cost of the house. Like at least let's go one third, one third, one third, you know, this four or 500 bucks a month. I mean, it doesn't cover the groceries anymore. So, and and they're, they're appalled that she wants to charge them that. And I said, well, I'm happy to come put a for sale sign on your lawn just to, you know, shake (laughs) up a little if that's what you need. Um, And she, she started laughing because, well, that's what I'm thinking. So we just went back and forth. And I said, well, it's funny you say this because I'm having a lot of conversations. And I said, um, I teach a little course that like for 18 to 28 year olds, I say little, but it's, it's kind of a big deal. It's called QL or quantum leap. Um, And it helps them create their vision and their mission for their life. And what I've learned from that has blown my mind. I cannot believe how many young adults in their early twenties are feel that life is like hopeless. Like they're never going to be able to provide for themselves. Yeah. I'm thinking, holy cow, if you're that age and you feel that, like what's going to happen here? You know, and that's parents going, oh my God, things are so expensive. How many times have we heard my kids will never be able to buy a house? Yeah. I was like, stop saying that. They're going to yeah. believe that. No, you can do anything. You can have anything and everything you want if you're willing to do what it takes to make it happen. Yeah, 100%. And I think that mindset is missing. And again, I, th- I think because parents these days don't know how to pass on to them and the situation, the market has changed and things have changed. But it's like, if we, if kids had that, we wouldn't be in the situation. If kids had that mindset from the beginning, we'd be looking for opportunities and, and they're not. So I want to shift gears but stay in the same realm of of mindset because obviously you're handling a lot of transactions. And for a lot of agents, the mindset is I can't, I don't want that many transactions. I couldn't handle that many transactions. That's too much. How do you even stay focused when you're doing that many transactions and how do you maintain that without burning out? Because I find a lot of agents really struggle with after they hit a certain threshold of just, it feels like it's too much for them. Again, it's mindset. Um, I always say it's their financial thermostat, Mm. you know, so I'll have somebody that's like having a kick, like just an incredible year. And then all of a sudden they stop selling and I'm like, what's happening? And then deals are falling through and like, it's just this weird things happening. And it took me a long time because I, again, curious, I'm like, why is this happening? I need to solve this. Right. And it's their financial thermostat. So there's a value. There's a little thing that I'll do with people and it'll tell me where they're at value wise. And it's almost to the dollar every time. And they just stop working or things stop coming together because they don't um, understand the value of what they, you know, what they're worth. And I mean, I had a hard time with that. I would make money and I always gave it away before I really understood and learned about investing. Mm. And I mean, our goal to me, it's like, you're responsible to make enough money to be able to provide for your loved ones in any kind of situation. Like if someone in your family needs emergency surgery somewhere and it's going to cost X number of dollars, like that's up to you to be able, like, there's no, you know, there's no government that's going to pay you later on. Like I'm always floored that people don't understand that, you know, if their parents or grandparents go into a nursing home and then they run out of money, like, the family is responsible to pay for it. The government doesn't just pay for it. Yeah. I think because as Canadians and healthcare, it's just one of those things that people get comfortable with. It's an, it's a weird entitlement. And then, so, you know, the goal is to earn money so that you can invest the money so that eventually your money is earning you the money that you were working so hard for in the beginning. I mean, you're yeah. trading your most valuable asset, which is your time in order to, you know, earn that income. So I'll get people that I, I do that thing. I'm, when I sit down with some of my agents and I'll show them like, if you're, you know, they tell you not to open a prep, for instance, not to do a prep to you're making like $250,000 a year. 
It's like, no, you open a prec when you know that you've made $50,000 more than what you need right. to live. Yeah. And you need to start building that $50,000 and start watching it grow and, you know, be proud of it and celebrate it, be in a group of people because who you surround yourself with matters big time. There's yeah. that mindset thing and what's yeah. possible. And you know, that 50,000, 100,000 that you've saved, you bought an investment property, all that kind of stuff over here that you're paying less tax on because it's in a corporation as well. I mean, that's the shiny red car in your driveway. That's the boat. That's the, like, there's just a satisfaction. I mean, when you, when you work hard, you need to see, see some kind of gratification. And to me, it can be that bank account. And then it's the investing of it and, and watching it grow and having that, that plan. You know, I firmly believe that, you know, where you are today and where you can be in five years from now, like will blow your mind. You, you know, that saying we hear of do what nobody else will do for the next five years and do whatever you want for the rest of your life. Like hundred yeah. percent, like challenge accepted. Let's get a group together and let's make that happen um, because it is. And I, and I feel that, you know, things got a lot of people say, oh, agents got lazy, it got easy. And then others say nothing was easy over the last few years. And I would agree with that as well, because it was high pressure. Yeah. Not my sales technique, right? Um, so I'm a big believer in, you know, it's not so much that it's like refocusing on your goals. Like, what do you want to achieve? Like, what's the outcome? You know, if you're going to, we talked about farming, if you're going to farm, like how many people and what's the outcome? Like, if you're going out door knocking, what's the outcome? It's not to just knock on doors and put flyers like today I'm going to, you know, give out 200 flyers. It's like, no, today I'm going to get four appointments. I'm not going to stop till I get four appointments. Yeah. So it's, yeah. all of that's important. And the, to, to the door knock point is having the right approach and the wrong approach. It takes the same amount of energy to go to that door. And I've always said this is like to go up there and just like, hey, you make making a move versus having a good approach and a good pitch at the door takes the same amount of physical energy mental energy to walk up to that door and have that conversation. So I'd rather err on the side of doing it the right way with the right mindset, because that does make a huge difference. And I think when agents have the right mindset around their goals, that's when you start to see the changes happen too. It's not just, I think it's because a lot of agents are like, oh, I'd like to do that. I'd like to hit this much financial. I'd like to get that much. And it's, they have an idea. It's, it's more of a dream than a goal. And then they don't come up with the plan. So for you guys, obviously it sounds like you're very, purposeful with the goals you're very purposeful with the plan how do you plan for yourself and for the agents individually because i think when you have a right plan that can that can be huge to keep together so what, what do you guys do around the planning so a couple things um i'm really big on setting like when you talk about what you're going to do it's like what's the intention mm -hmm. right get rid of the expectation what's the intention and go in with the intention because when you're going with an intention like you're giving a hundred percent i think I think a lot of people have come to a point where they're afraid to try really hard. We've all had a, a story and experience in our past where we tried really hard at something and it didn't work out. Yeah. And it's like, well, why bother trying? Right. Because when you give something a hundred percent, you know, typically some people will go, Oh, but then it didn't work. So then I feel crummy. Well, I don't know if I show up at a listing appointments and buyer things and I'm at 40 or 50% instead of a hundred I leave there going, I should have done this. I could have said that. Why didn't I do that? And then I beat myself up. Mm. So it's like, why not do all that ahead of time to be prepared, show up like it's showtime, right? And give it your all. And you'll be surprised how many times you'll get it. And when you don't, you know, you go, hey, I can live with that because I know I did my best. I showed up yes. as my best. That must be their relative. Or, hey, they listed it for $500,000 more than what they should have. I'll get it on the backswing. Right. Send a nice note saying, hey, saw that you listed the property. You know, if I have any buyers, I'll bring them by. Obviously, I owe, you know, duty to the listings that I do have. So I'll be selling those first. But if there's any questions, anything you need that pops up, like don't be afraid to reach back out. I'll do that just to open the door because sometimes they feel embarrassed and they don't want to call you back. So yeah. I'll send that one note and then I don't touch them ever again because not supposed to. Yep. And it's not right. Um, but yeah. Um, so goal setting, I'm, I'm a big vision board person. I always have my vision board, you know, ready to go. I carry it with me. Um, and it's just getting clarity as to what are the goals that I want to achieve. Um, and I do that with my team. We have everyone's vision board. So sometimes people will help other people. Like, you know, I said that in the next couple of years, I want to buy a waterfront. So now I have agents on my team telling me about waterfronts. All the <laughs> nice. time. Like you got to see this one. And I'm oh, like, yeah. not, you know, 
I'm going to buy in the winter. Um, so they, uh, it's getting people involved in it and understanding what it is. And then, um, yeah, I have a strategy. I'm a huge Tony Robbins fan. I'm part of the Platinum Partners. So nice. that's who you surround you with matters. Um, and we do what's called an RPM. So, you know, you come up with your goal and then, you know, we typically go to how we're going to do it. You know, oh, I want to achieve, I want to sell a hundred homes a year. Where do I start? Well, it's like, okay, how am I going to do it? And then how can get you stuck? Yes. Yeah. Right. Because your brain's like, well, that's not going to work. And you get all those stories happening. So what they teach you is um, I want to do a hundred deals a year. And it's like, okay, why is that a must? So before mm -hmm. you even make it a smart goal and, you know, all of that measurable and attainable and believable and all that, you got to go to why you want to achieve it. Yeah. And when you can do, um, I mean, it sounds hokey, but if you're, you know, your why or your must, if it doesn't make you cry, it's not it. Keep going deeper. Right. So people go, well, I want to do it for my family. OK, well, why do you want to do it for your family? You know, that that's great that you want to do it for them. But why? And then you go, well, because I want them to be proud of me. OK, well, that's great that you want them to be proud of you. But why do you want them to be proud of you? Um, you know, well, you know, it feels good to have people be proud of you. And it's like by the time you get down, you find out that really you want to do 100 deals because you want to prove it to yourself. And maybe there's a part where you want to show your dad that. Yeah. you know, or your mom or whatever that, you know, that you want them to be proud of you because you didn't fe have that feeling when you were younger. So there's a hole. Sometimes meeting those goals is just feeling an inner hole that you have. Um, and that's cool. And, it, and it's like, once you feel it, you can keep going. Like it, yeah. it's, it's fulfilling. That's what it means, right? It's filling that hole, that gap that you have from some story from when you were younger. And that perfectly ties into what I was going to ask you next is there's, because I find there's two things that I've, I've seen a whole lot of agents back. It's that initial figure out the why, and then there's that keeping them going because for some agency, they get through that. They go, okay, figure it out. This is why I want to do this. They get started. They start having some success and then to maintain it or grow it is I find sometimes or most often is another reason. There's, there's, there's gotta be another push to keep you going from that initial. So what, what have you seen or what's been the experience in that keeping you going because for you obviously you've been doing this for a long time and just keep trucking along at it so a lot of it has to do with for me is that plan of okay well what's your what's your income goal then mm. so when you're right now you're working hard like but you need to have that end in mind like because it, it's not about the destination it's about the journey yep right but the goal feels like you're chasing you know the 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 goal at the end you're you're for the you're waiting for the end in mind it's like no okay so here is the intention is to enjoy my career there's going to be good days there's going to be bad but my intentions are to help as many people as i can solve as many problems as i can and help people you know live their best life so if i'm going to do that um i also need to be doing that so that's where the balance comes in yep. um and that's where investing comes into me it's like you know real estate real estate is such an amazing opportunity so it's understanding you know, like, hey, we know about real estate, we know about investing, how does that transfer over? Um, and if we're doing it, then we can teach it and add more value. So it's like, it just keeps going, right? That's part of the journey. But there's that destination. I think, like I said, what happens is a lot of people in real estate start making a lot of money and they start spending, oh, work hard, play hard, and they go crazy spending it. Yeah. Whereas if you started saving it, you know, like I had a guy that was making 60 grand for 10 years at his previous job. He got into real estate first year he made 150 next year 250 the next year well he's spending because like holy cow i made 100 grand more it's like yeah but now you're in a new tax bracket <laughs> yeah, and yeah. now you owe the government 100 grand and right so it's like if you're able to teach that what happens is they end up in a situation where you know the wealth starts to build and it's like they're trying to replace 100 grand a year Whereas what I find is I get agents that are trying to replace 350. For, oh, I need half a million dollars a year passive income. It's like, no, you don't. No, you don't. You know, at a Tony Robbins event, we figured out that $40,000 a year will give you a roof over your head and food in your belly. Yeah. Now, probably not the roof that you want to live under and yep. probably not the food you want to eat every day, but this would be sustainable. Yeah. So anything more than that just provides a different level. But what mm -hmm. if you were to start with focusing on if I can earn 40 grand a year passively, this is what it's going to give me. Mm. That's awesome. That's that, that just hit me good. That's I like that. And it, it goes back to that worst case scenario. And you said that, okay, what's the bottom and then start building off of that. And, and then if you can create that at least baseline, you know, you're okay with that, which yeah. Well, I like yeah. That. And then 
once you have the baseline, then it's easier to build from there because you have yeah. that as an extra boost every year. Yeah. yeah. Right. And then it's like, well, how big you want to go? I, I, I think that when people think of financial freedom, they get so excited and they're thinking like multiple homes and private jets. And <laughs> it's just, it's like trying to tell a teenager, man, just, you know, buckle down for five years and you're going to, five years is forever. I yeah, talked to yeah. someone the other day and I'm like, in 15 years, you're, you're 20 and 15 years from now, you could, you could be financially free and never have to work a day in your life ever again. He goes, so I got to work a lifetime to get there. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. whoa, yeah. what a, whoa. Right. That's how he, that's how they see it. And it's, it's just fascinating to think that way. So I think that if you do it in like five year chunks and it's like yeah. anybody can do anything for a length of time, if they know when the end is, but it's, it's still balance. I mean, there, that's probably one of the places where I feel like, you know, sometimes I messed up because I mean, I felt like I was winning. I was, you know, I, at all the hockey games and the dance lessons and the swimming lessons, and you got to find the win in it. Yeah. Um, I wore, I wore outfits. Like I wore jackets with team Jordan on it all the time. You know, you have to be consistent. You have to wear it all the time if you're going to do it. If not, it can look cheesy. And I, at swimming lessons, I taught, like I taught, I sold pretty much every teacher a house that my kids had. Um, the hockey coaches, the swimming lesson person, I sold them a house, figure skating, like, because you're there and it's like, when you're wearing the coat, it basically says like, hey, this is my mobile office. Yeah. I'm ready to talk real estate. And again, I would share those stories. That's awesome. And I want to go back to that five-year thing because I think it's, it's okay. huge because I just heard a quote recently and it's most people overestimate what they can get done in a year and grossly underestimate what they can get done in five years. And I think a lot of agents are stuck in the right now, which is that year. And they, they feel overwhelmed because they're not getting the results they want. Can't look past the five years or like you said, they're looking for way down the road and, and can't see through that. So I want to talk about scale back to a newer agent or an agent who's kind of getting, getting started. What, how do you advise them to get through that first year? Because sometimes there's tough things going on. There are things, how do you get them through that first year or two when things are just kind of getting started and kind of getting built and, and getting out of that, Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm struggling right now. So first thing I tell them is don't talk to anybody that's not achieving at the level you want to achieve at, mm. like protect your mind. Mm. Very, very important. Cause all kinds of people are going to give you all kinds of reasons why it's not going to work. So really protect your mind, stay focused every day, get like have a power up, like get ready, get motivated, get inspired. Um, have a couple times during the day, like have a go-to if something's not working, what can you do to go get that back on track? Um, that's really important. And then I also get into, um, people come in, I'll hire a new agent or I'll be meeting a new agent and I'll be like, oh, so what's your income goal? And for the last several years, the goal is $200,000. It's always $200,000. And I go, okay, well, your first homework is go find people that like find industries, businesses, people that make $200,000. Like, I don't know where this number came from. I don't know if it's this wonderful selling sunsets yeah. reality, non-reality show. Um, but I'm like, who, who are you to think that you're just going to make 200 grand? Now, in the same token, I'm also the person that's not going to burst that bubble, but yep. I want to test it to see if they believe it. Yep. Right. Um, so I'll be like, okay, well, in order to make $200,000, you got to appreciate that like a lot of doctors don't make $200,000 and they went to school for 12 years or 15 years of their life. Like you went to school for six months, right? Yeah. So now what are you going to do to earn it? Because, you know, you don't just get a check in real estate. There's a big reason why, you know, uh, so many people are no longer in the industry after two years. Yep. Like this isn't for the faint of heart. Like I get people, they go, oh my God, there's so much paperwork. And I'm thinking, you're on a team. Like, <laughs> part of the paperwork is done for you. You're doing the minimal, like yeah. good God people, right? But I don't know what the expectation is. Everyone thinks it's easy because they see real estate agents on their boat in the middle of the week and, you know, driving their nice car and their nice suits and whatever. So they don't understand what happens behind the scenes, yeah. right? Yeah. So um, I'm really big on taking the $200,000 and I go, okay, you need to do this many deals, which means you need to talk to this many, you have this many appointments and your conversion. And I go through it and then I'll divide it up and I'll go, okay, typically a person, if you took 12 weeks off a year and they laugh and I'm like, oh, most agents take December off. So there's four right off the bat and, you know, long weekends and blah, blah, blah. So even if I said there's 40 weeks left and you took 12 off, you took one a month off. Okay. 
Now, let's figure that out. How much money does that turn into a week and then a day? So if you need to make, you know, if it's $5,000, like, I don't know, some people it might be $5,000 a week they need to make to hit their goals. Some people, it might be $5,000 a day. But if you wake up in the morning with that mindset, like I do that, I wake up and I'm like, holy cow, I got to earn 10 grand today. What does that look like? What do I need to do to earn 10 grand? What do, what do I need to deliver? How many appointments, right? So more than anything, I have all the numbers for the appointments, but it's that mindset that ties it to how much money I need to make today. Yeah. Right. And, and to me, that should change everything. Like, how are you earning that? Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's like open houses. People complain about open houses. I love open houses. I've sold so many homes at open houses and I'll go, let me ask you this. If you did uh, 52 open houses in one year, and it, that could be two on a weekend. It could be four on a weekend. I used to do four. I said, if you did that many open houses, do you think you'd sell a house? Yeah. Do you think you'd sell more than one house? How many would you sell? Five. Okay. You're going to sell five houses. Let's just say that that's $50,000 for round numbers just to be fun. 50 grand. Now divide that by the 52 open houses. See where I'm going? Yep. That's almost a thousand bucks an open house. Yep. You think you could go out early and put up five signs <laughs> exactly. instead of two? You think yeah. you can put some, you know, a balloon, something on the damn sign? You think you could bake some cookies? You're getting paid a thousand bucks for that open house. Like exactly. reframe your mindset. Yep, exactly. I, I'm a big believer in quantifying and gamifying it. And for us, when we were doing our farm, we were out door knocking. I did figure out the average, how many we needed to get, how many we needed to get people into our database, how many we needed to, to do that. And then I worked it out too. It was like, $24 per door knock that I did that I would be making. And it's like, oh, even if they say no, it's like, oh, 24 bucks, oh, 24 bucks. Like that's the easiest 24 bucks I ever made. Whether they're at home, not home, whatever. It's like, that was, that's pretty easy. So when you, yeah, when you reframe how you see it, I think it becomes easier to stick with it and follow that path. But if you just go, I'd like to do this many deals, then it's, it's harder to stick with it. Because if you are behind a bit, now you're like, oh, I didn't hit that goal. I'll readjust my goal, I'll readjust what I'm working uh -huh. on. Instead of saying, what do I need concretely to do? Then it becomes easier to... I've done it before where it's like, you know, here are four quarter, quarterly goals. Like I want to take my family to Disney. I want it, whatever. Right. And we're going to go on a trip, my wife, whatever it is. Right. And it'll be like, okay, you haven't hit your goals this quarter. What do you want to cross off? Mm -hmm. You know, just a little picture. Here's a pen, like that pain of crossing off the goal. Like, who are you disappointing right now? Mm -hmm. How's that feel? Yeah. That's right. Were there days that you got up and, you know, you didn't look at this. You didn't imagine this. You didn't realize that one day you'd be crossing this out. So in the morning, look at that picture, those four pictures and go like, which one do I want to cross off? None. Then get off your ass, go to work. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, I like that. That's awesome. <laughs> All right. Well, I want to I want to wind down and, and just quickly discuss where, where do you see yourself going and the team going over the next year, two years, three years or five years? Where do you see things shifting for you or, or where do you see things staying the same? So I started having some fun over um, COVID, um, wrote a book with a good friend of mine, Donna Beach, um, called Truly Winning in Real Estate. So we really wanted to just, like, if we were to do real estate over again, uh, what would that look like? What advice would we give? So some of the stuff that we talked about, um, you know, um, Sphere is huge, repeat and referral business, we call it, you know, you know some people call it uh, their database, we call it their data bank, try to, you know, again, get you to think differently about it. So there's some great tips in there. Um, I wrote another book that just came out. It's online right now, freedom to live your best life. So it's about real estate investing. Um, it's different than all the real estate. Like I'm looking at it right now and like real estate investing is not what it was six months ago. Even yeah. it's totally different. And what I like about this book is this book is a great book for real estate agents to give their clients. Um, I'm getting calls from clients saying, Oh my God, I, I want to buy another house because I I'm in chapter five of your damn book. And I keep seeing all these different ways and they're just so logical and they make sense. And there's stories in it. There's good stories, bad stories, what worked, what didn't work. Um, you know, couples buying homes together. Basically it's like every time you buy real estate, it's an investment, you know? Um, and right now more than ever to me, investing in real estate should be like purpose. Mm. You know, if you're buying a house that your parents are going to rent, cause they're going to rent anyway, why not own the house they're renting? Yeah. Um, right. If you have a certain area that you want to retire to, cause a lot of people start thinking about retiring, 10 years out, five years out, like buy that house. What's that going to look like in five years? Now you already have it. You know, it gives you options. So it just shares those stories. So 
I'm really, really passionate about real estate investing. So I, I'm dedicating more time in that and teaching that. Um, again, the industry, I, I even feel um, that I got disconnected because I, you know, I've been doing this for a long time that I started getting disconnected of the actual opportunity that real estate makes. You know, like you can make so, you can earn, not make, you can earn so much money in real estate. Like it's crazy. Like it's, yeah. it's such an amazing opportunity. You know, I was recently at a, at a multifamily investing event and there, most of the people in the room were new to the country. Like I'd say 80% of the people in the room were new to the country in the past 12 months. And I'm thinking, holy cow, they're not looking to buy a duplex. They're looking to buy a multifamily building, apartment yeah. building. Yeah. And when I went around and asked questions, the one word that they said all the time was opportunity. Yeah. And we have so much opportunity and we're not taking advantage of it. So for me, um, I, I really think that just hunking it down, taking advantage of the real estate industry, selling more properties, helping more people, because I know the solutions. I know how to help people during these difficult times, agents and people. So really focusing on that. Um, I was really going towards speaking and sharing more of this, but I think I'm going to be like kind of a 20% still doing that and 80% still all in with the real estate industry, just because I love it. And I see the opportunity. It's funny. I had to pull out a little bit to go do this other stuff to go hold a cow. Yeah. <laughs> you know, this is, this is Mine. so amazing what we get to do. Yeah. Um, and then taking that money to invest with. That's awesome. And you so. mentioned Donna Beach and you mentioned opportunity. I want to put the two together because I'm here because of Donna. So Donna was my team leader when I moved oh, over wow. and uh, she gave me the opportunity to be the uh, office productivity coach. And that completely changed the trajectory of my life and where I'm at now and what I'm doing because of that. So thank you, Donna, if you're watching this and uh, yeah, she's fantastic. So check out your book for that as well. Um, so we always wrap up with a last piece of advice. So if you were to give some advice, some agents who are listening to this, who may be struggling, maybe thinking, how do I take the next step or how do I grow in their business? What advice would you give to our agents? So kind of two little pieces to it. So one, it's like, what do you really want? Right? So the, that, that reason why we fail, like who wants to fail at anything? Right? So if you don't want to fail, you want to achieve something. What is it that you want to achieve? Like get really, really clear on what that is. And then, you know, it's not about taking action. It's about why is it a must that you achieve it? Like, why is that a must? Why do you need to achieve it? What's it going to give you? Like money is good for the good it can do. So, you know, if you have a goal to make X number of dollars, figure out what you're going to do with it. You know, if it's like, I like the categories, you know, you put so much money in, you know, taxes and so much money in investing, whatever, but there's one in there that's giving, Right. And if you are also giving money and you get to see the joy or the impact that it makes, you know, every, every paycheck and you're putting five or 10% aside to go give to somebody, it's going to help you to um, feel fulfilled and grateful. And, you know, when you're grateful and you're, you're just in that space, there's just so much more you can do. So I would say, you know, getting into those categories and figuring that out, like, I'll even go a little bit deeper in that where it's with those categories, there's a part where it's like fun money. So fun money is your trips and whatever. And I make the fun money the same amount. So usually it's 5% fine money, 5% donate money. Yep. And most people focus on the fun money and go, Oh my God, like I can't live off of that. And I go, okay, then you need to make more money. And if you need to make, exactly. but then the money helps you to put the money in those categories. And then that, yeah. that gratitude or impact money really makes a big difference in life and it feels really good and it makes you realize the opportunity you have because you have the opportunity to go make a lot of money that you can then share with others and impact others as well as protect yourself and your family so that you're always in a position to make the decisions that's right for you. Yeah. You know, if you don't want to work with this client because he's not very nice, refer him to somebody that he's going to connect with more and keep going. And you have the ability to do that when you have a, your $40,000 base yeah, that's awesome. sitting there. Yeah great advice so, mm -hmm. so we always wrap up with the best book you mentioned your book uh, you can give us another shout out for it where people can get it or you can mention another book it's on like. amazon right now yeah this book is on amazon um it's an easy read it looks big but it's like <laughs> stories and fun and you know it, so many relatable like you'll probably learn just as much about selling real estate as investing in real estate with this um so highly recommend you pick it up it's on amazon right now i have it half price it's like 14.95 delivered to your door um, it's so cool. They print it directly when you order it. So I don't know how Amazon does the magic they do. Um, the last book cost me 12 bucks just to mail it to you. So it's pretty cool. I don't make anything on it. It's for impact. 
Um, I just want to make a difference. And like I said, I guarantee you that you will learn one or two tricks in here just to sell more houses. So you'll probably sell two more houses from it. Never mind what you're going to learn about investing. So add well, value to your clients' lives. We'll throw that in the show notes and we'll throw the book you did with Don. Is that available online as well? Or yes, it um, it's on Amazon as well. Truly winning in real estate. Awesome. We'll throw that in there. So Lorraine, I really appreciate you being on here, sharing your insights and wisdom. How can our viewers check out what you're up to and connect more with you to find out what you're up to? And, and um, On the social channels, probably best. Lorraine P. Jordan. I got a P in there so that it can find me. Um, yeah, and LorraineJordan.com. So reach out anytime. Um, happy to answer questions. Happy to help anybody that's kind of struggling or has a question that needs to go a little deeper. Send me a message and we'll go from there. Awesome. We'll drop that in the show notes as well. So thank you again for being on here. I know that if our viewers take even a fraction of some of the things you've shared and really focus on that mindset and mastery and really reframe all these things, they'll start to see results. So I appreciate you sharing your insights and experience with our audience. And I know they're going to get a lot out of it. Awesome. Don't give up. Get out there and sell some houses. Awesome. Thank you. Take care. Thanks for checking out today's episode. If you'd like more videos like this, be sure to sub like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Check out our Facebook page and our other social media channels. Looking forward to bringing you more great content like this and happy farming.